Hey guys, it's Bart Johnson here, and it is that time of year again. It is NAB 2017. Hey. I'm here in Las Vegas, and of course, back at the Aperture booth with What's Ted Sim from the A-Team. And Ted, we've got a lot of stuff that we want to check out at your booth uh, this year, and we're going to get around to it. But first, we're going to start with this thing, which is front and center, yep. literally, in your booth. What do we have here? So this right here is the big thing that I think everyone's been asking for, everyone's been waiting for, and I think this is going to really change the industry of lighting. This is the Aperture 300D, so it is 300. three times as powerful as the 120D, Jeez. which is already a super punchy light. Um, this will basically replace your Joker 8 100s, uh, Joker 800s, your traditional HMI lights. Um, super, super punchy, and of course, on the front here, Still single source. Yeah, it's blinding. Single hard source. This is 10% too. We're not even. <laughs> oh my goodness, it is a 10%. <laughs> yeah. So for you guys that already know the 120D lights, um, this right here is going to be just a little bit longer. So it's about 1.5 times the size. Tiny bit longer. And that's because we're taking, again, all of those electronics, we're taking them off putting them down and are going to this ballast here, which has indeed gotten longer. Yep, that's <laughs> about double the size and it, it looks like there's a good reason for it. So you still have all the same controls that we're used to with the, uh, the, with the 120 lights, mm -hmm. um, but on the back, you got some different power support, uh, not options, but requirements Absolutely. for this guy because of all the power it puts out. So on the back here, you're gonna need two batteries to power this thing. However, let me just emphasize, you've got essentially what is a 2K tungsten light on battery on the go. So your Ginnies and everything that you would normally leave at home, we've now got something that can run on batteries that you could take in the forest if you have moonlight or something like that, or you're in full daylight and you need like a full, something that'll compete with the actual sun. With the sunlight, yeah. yeah. We've got that here. So two V-mount batteries on the back. You're gonna need at least a 230 watt uh, so something that has at least an 11 amp output. Okay, so, so you're, you're gonna want a battery that can handle that kind of draw, but that's similar to what we had with the 120s. The yeah. 120s, I believe it was about a 10 amp draw you wanted for the battery just because yeah. of the amount of, of power that's putting out. Obviously, this guy is putting out more than double, and I wanna make sure everybody heard what you said. Yep. Like a 2K tungsten, <laughs> right, in a single source LED that weighs very little and is compact and portable and yeah. that's just ridiculous. If you guys know the 120D, it's basically the same size, just a little bit longer. Um, if you lift off this actual thing, it is super, super light in comparison. And watch, if I take this actual and turn this off so I don't blind you guys, taking this off, this is a super, super tiny light. I don't think your 2K has ever looked this small yeah. before. This and light. It's it's made of the same materials, same structure, same build quality as the uh, as the 120s. Aircraft grade aluminum. Yeah, uh, I see you've got the same fan in the bottom. Now you have two fans yes. there. And you were telling me something interesting about the way these fans operate in terms of give, keeping yeah. it quiet. Absolutely. So basically, you guys are already familiar if you know the 120Ds. They have essentially what is the MacBook Pro fan, sources from the same factory, super sound. If you put your ear next to it, you're not going to hear anything. Mm -hmm. But because it makes a little bit more heat, we need two fans. So with those two fans, what's important here is that what we want is we don't want the sound of those two fans to stack. Now with just one fan, you're not going to hear it. But with two fans that they stack, you might hear it a little bit. However, to combat that, what we did is we had this other fan move at a slightly slower speed. So it's doing a slightly different pitch. So therefore that sound isn't stacking anymore and we're not gonna hear it as much anymore. So you're not amplifying the same frequency of fan noise. Indeed. You're, you're so splitting I... it to two different speeds. That's something that's that, that could easily be an afterthought, but I'm sure it's gonna be really valuable to anybody who's, who's working sound. And I mean, they're super quiet anyway. You can't, yeah. you can't hear anything. Like so look, you they just now kicked on and you can't- Put your ear. You, I'll put my mic up to you, you can't. There's, Literally nothing. There's, there's nothing totally there. Totally silent. Um, on the go, on batteries, and just like our old lights, watch your eyes, watch your eyes. Oh yeah. I'm gonna put this over here. If I go over, just like any of our old lights, this is the Aperture ecosystem that we're working with. We're trying to keep everything together. So if you bought a light from us three years ago, we want it to work with your new lights. So yeah. for instance, the Amaran 672 came out three years ago. It used this remote. Mm -hmm. Now we have the 300D coming out this year, three years later, and this same remote here, is going to be able to power the light on and off. And I'm going to be able to change everything and group them all together. 
seamless workflow, keeping it all together and we're not leaving our old users behind. So all of the lights in the Aperture ecosystem, newest to oldest that run with that remote, you can group them, put them together, dim them, turn them on and off and all that stuff and control them in groups just like any other light. With all the in one same place. same remote. Yep. Perfect, that on is the awesome. front here, we're still listening to basically our user base. Now our user base gave us a couple of comments. So one thing here was that they wanted protection for that LED. Mm -hmm. So on the front here, we now have a glass filter here. Protection on the oh, LED. Oh, I see that. Okay. Yeah. Your chip on board now is not exposed anymore to the environment. However, we did something a little tricky here too. So basically this glass right here, we're not just done with protection. Okay. What we're adding here, this is actually a slight magenta filter. So uh -huh. what does that mean? That means that previously when this was a 96 TLCI light, this is now a 98 TLCI light. Wow. So we're actually bumping up the TLCI by adding a little bit of magenta into that light increasing the actual color quality of it. So now you have a more color accurate, more powerful light that is essentially building upon what we had before. And now does this have the same uh, sort of beam angle that yeah. we were used to with the with the 120s? Yep. Okay, and then you of course have the ability to put on all of those wonderful Bowens uh, S-mount accessories yeah. to modify the light. You've got your reflector here that comes with it, but of course there are plenty of other things in the Bowens ecosystem that you can this put on here. You, I wish I could like shout this from the top of a mountain and tell people about it because <laughs> they don't get it because the, the Bowens S-mount is enormous. It essentially means that every, all those times that you've shot through like a 4x4 silk and that you've needed to have this huge pain in the butt way to soften your light or shape your light or anything like that. Yeah. The Bones S-mount brings out any photo accessory essentially and you can snap it on there. Beauty dishes, barn doors, soft boxes, everything can now just snap on directly onto here. Very yeah. nice. And um, so in terms of powering, we talked about we talked about the batteries, but I noticed something a little different here we have as well for uh, for your your plugged into the wall for yep. your your AC option here. So what yeah. do we have here that, that is necessary to run this guy? Yeah, so basically this is pulling a ton of power. It is LED, so it's not pulling too much. It's 300 watts. However, to regulate that circuit and make sure that it can go into a household circuit, mm -hmm. this right here, we have a larger ballast than normal. So again, this is a bigger piece, but this is gonna go in the same place that a traditionally your normal power brick would go. Yeah. So yes, it's a little bit more size, but it's not any more pieces. But yeah, it's down on the ground, it's out of the way, and yeah, it just replaces your normal battery brick, or, or not battery brick, but converter brick that you usually get when exactly. you plug into a wall. And basically one of the things too that we added onto this is that if you go onto the back here, these are now all XLR ports. Okay. So it goes four pin XLR to four pin XLR to five pin XLR to five pin XLR. So what does that mean? Before we had XLR to Limo, mm -hmm. now by doing XLR to XLR, if you want to extend that cable, it's super easy to find 5-pin XLR. You can get more lengths of 5-pin XLR and yeah. connect them and move that even further off. We're standardizing it now. It is now super easy to do. You can extend it. Those accessories are, you can buy them at any music store you go to. That's awesome. That is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and so, of course, this comes with, you know, uh, or can work with any of the Bowen s -mount accessories, which means you can put a Fresnel on it. You can put a softbox on it. You can put the Beauty dish dishes. on it. You can do that stuff. Yeah. And with the amount of power that's coming out of this thing. You could light a 9-foot <laughs> softbox if I'm, you wanted. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'd, you'd be able to throw that amount of light. An enormous softbox, you could light, uh, you could spot it in, you could have a spotlight for theatrical use. Uh, if you wanted to raise it in the sun and use it bare bulb, you could honestly have like a moon effect. Um, Jeez, <laughs> we are trying to expand the way that you work and we know that that, that that 800 HMI is like a cornerstone piece for when you're going bigger on those productions. We're trying to take you there, you know? We started really, really low budget indie and we were trying to build and build and build. And I, want, I wanted to get yeah. right to that. So those 800 HMIs, what do those usually cost? Yeah, those will normally cost you five to six grand easily. Okay, now I know we don't have final pricing on this yet, but what are you guys aiming for yeah, on gonna this We're gonna try guy? to do the aperture thing. We're gonna try to bring the price down. Um, we're gunning for under a thousand dollars and I think, I think we can do it. Um, so nothing official there, so don't yeah. head, hold don't, Ted don't, to this. Call me on the phone. <laughs> but even still, even getting yeah. this even in that remote ballpark of yes. a price is is fantastic. We're talking one-sixth the price. And not yeah. on, on top of that too, this is more heat efficient. You can plug more of these. You could plug, again, this is essentially a 2K tungsten. You could plug six of these into one household circuit. Jeez. I mean, like technology is amazing, right? Yeah, you could that never do that before. Um, and essentially, we're, we're using more efficient technology LEDs. We're raising the TLCI by putting this filter in, and we're just making it smaller, you know? Yeah. We understand that there's more pieces. However, by making it smaller, 
How do you rig anything that's above a 1K light? You put it in the air. Yeah. Why would you put that weight in the air? That's dangerous. Honestly. And all your controls would be up in the air and you Just wouldn't be able to the access button. them. So now all you have to put up in the air or you know wherever you're putting it is just yeah. this head and everything else is down where you need it, where it's safe, yeah. where you can get to it. Yep. And, and there you go. 300D, we think it's gonna come out in under three months. It's gonna be under a thousand dollars. We will make it, I'll we'll try as hard as I can. <laughs> we will try as hard as we can to make like it. Like I said, as nobody possible. grilled Ted on this where <laughs> he's working on it, but I mean, this this is truly fantastic. Uh, it definitely deserves to be here at the centerpiece of your booth. This thing is this thing is a beast, it's a tank. We it's, hope it's gonna change the way it, it's lighting awesome. works. Yeah. Well, fantastic. So guys, be sure to keep an eye on Aperture, um, not only for their existing lights with the, the line of Lightstorm panels and the Lightstorm 120 lights, uh, but obviously the, the big guy, the 300D, is on its way, and I'm sure some other variants of the 300, like a tungsten version, yeah. I'm sure are, are following shortly thereafter. So there you go, guys. That's Ted from the Aperture booth here at NAB 2017. Stay tuned to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I got a lot more coming this year from the floor. Thanks for watching, guys.